Welcome to Glory and Beauty. Hi, I'm Janice, and today we are going to crochet a cardigan for that little girl in our lives that we love so much. So this cardigan is actually called the Juju Curdy, and it's named after the little girl that I made it for. When she asked me to crochet her a cardigan this month for her birthday, I could not help but to think of the bright and lovely Red Heart Super Saver Ogo Yarn and Baby Rainbow that Red Heart Yarn sent me some months ago. Its happy colors match her personality to a T. So you're going to want to follow along with the written pattern, especially if you're making a different size. So the written pattern has multiple sizes going down as small as a size 2. In this video tutorial, I'm going to be making the young girl size 8 to 10. Now while the construction is completely the same, there are certain row stitch counts and measurements that are going to be specific to your size. You'll want to reference the pattern for that because all my instruction in this video is going to be for this larger size. Now the written pattern can be found on the blog or you can purchase your own printable PDF version of the pattern that you can print out, mark up, view on your iPad or tablet. I'll put links to both in the description box below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest pattern releases. I'm so glad that you decided to crochet with me today. I hope you'll stick around till the end because not only are you gonna have a beautiful project, but you'll also get a sneak peek into what's coming up next on Glory and Beauty. Are you ready? Come, let's crochet together. Now to make the Juju Cardi, you'll need Red Heart Super Saver Ogo Yarn and Baby Rainbow, Red Heart with Love Yarn in white, two crochet hooks, a size H and a size 7, measuring tape, some scissors, a yarn needle, and two stitch markers if you think it'd be helpful. And of course, make sure you make those gauge swatches. Now for the first part of this pattern where we're making the panels and the sleeves, you will be using your size H hook. We are going to start with the front panels and the front panels start with a foundation stitch called foundation half double crochet. Now the foundation half double crochet stitch allows you to knock out your chain and half double crochet row at the same time and it's actually more stretchier than the traditional chain and then half double crochet across, making it more ideal for garment making. Now, if you already know how to do it, then you can skip ahead. However, if it is your first time trying foundation half double crochet, I'll walk you through it slowly here on the front panels. And it'll also be the way we start the back panel as well as the sleeves. So let's hop to it. We'll start off by making a slip knot and placing it on our hook. Then we'll chain two. Now we're gonna yarn over and insert our hook into this first chain. Then we'll yarn over and pull up that loop and elongate it. This will keep our chain from being too tight. Then yarn over and pull through one loop only and there is your first chain. Then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And there is your first half double crochet. I'm going to mark mine. Let's do that again. Yarn over and insert your hook into the chain that you just made, catching both of those V's. And you'll yarn over, pull up that loop, and stretch to elongate it. Then yarn over and pull through only the first loop to make your next chain. And then yarn over and pull through all three loops to make your second half double crochet. This is the foundation half double crochet. And you will foundation half double crochet 21 stitches.
when you have made your 21 stitches or 7 inches if you're going by inches, then chain 1 and turn your work. And there is your chain with your first row of half double crochet on top. You can see it has a nice stretchy start. Now we're just going to half double crochet across. You'll work into that first stitch. Yarn over and insert your hook into the first stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops to make your first half double crochet. You'll place one half double crochet in each stitch all the way down the row. Then you'll repeat row 2 for 45 rows or 18 inches. And once you've completed 45 rows or 18 inches, you'll go ahead and bind off. You'll make two front panels. Now we're going to make our back panel the same exact way as we made our front, starting with that foundation half double crochet, except this time we'll start with 45 stitches to get a 15 inch width. We'll work in half double crochet until we have reached 18 inches or 45 rows. So we'll start with our foundation half double crochet. You'll make 45 stitches. Once you have your 45 stitches or your 15 inch width, you'll go ahead and chain one and turn. And working right into that first stitch, you're going to half double crochet in each stitch across this row and on every row until you've reached 18 inches or 45 rows. So now we come to the sleeves. Now the sleeves have decreases, meaning we are gonna start with a certain amount of stitches and we're gonna decrease that number of stitches down. Now the amount you start with and the amount you decrease all depends on your size. So make sure you're referencing that written pattern so that way you are working with the instructions that are specific to your size. Now the reason for the decreasing is because we want our little friend to be able to get her arm through the armhole comfortably, but then we want the sleeve to fit nicely around her arm. So we'll make it wide enough for her to get her arm through, and then we'll decrease it down so the sleeve is more fit to her arm. We'll crochet down until it's about 1.5 inches from her wrist to leave room for a nice little cuff. All right, let's get to it. To start our sleeve, we'll start with a foundation half double crochet row of 39 stitches. Once you have your 39 stitches or 13 inches, then chain one and turn. You're gonna half double crochet across one row.
So now we're going to start our decreases. We're going to decrease two stitches on every row for the next four rows. And on that fifth row, we're going to decrease only one stitch. Our decreases will take place at the beginning and end of each row. And we're going to use an invisible single crochet two together to make those decreases. So chain one and let's turn. To invisible single crochet two together, insert your hook into the front loop only of that first stitch. And then insert your hook into the front loop only of the next stitch. Then you'll yarn over and pull through that first loop on your hook. And then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. You have just decreased one stitch. So now you'll half double crochet across the row until you get to the last two stitches. And when you get to the last two stitches, you'll invisible single crochet two together those last two. And now you've just decreased your second stitch. Chain one and turn your work. Decrease two stitches in the same exact way for three more rows. And after you've decreased those three rows, you'll decrease only one stitch on that next row. So then you will have decreased a total of nine stitches over five rows. So once you finish your decreases, you'll then half double crochet across every row until your entire sleeve measures 11 inches or for 26 rows total. And now your sleeve is done. You'll make two sleeves. For seaming, you can use any seaming technique you would like. I personally like the whip stitch, and so that is what I use in this video. Just make sure you're working on the wrong side only the whole time. Now with half double crochet, there is no wrong side. It's the same on both sides. However, you will create a wrong side as soon as you make your first seam. Make sure you stay on that side the entire time that you're seaming. Let's go. So, so far you should have a back panel, two sleeves, and two front panels. Making sure your foundation half double crochet rows are opposite from you, you're gonna lay your front panels on top of your back panel. And then you'll seam. Now for seaming on the sleeves. You're actually going to open up your panel so they make a nice rectangle right in front of you. Make sure the wrong side is still facing up. And that seam that you just made where the front panel and the back panel meet, you're gonna take the centermost stitch of your sleeve and line it up with that seam. 
Then you'll make sure that there's the same amount of sleeve on both the back panel and the front panel. I don't give a specific stitch count here. You can count rows, just make sure it's even on both sides. And then you'll seam your sleeve on using any technique that you would like. Once you finish your sleeves, you're going to flip your cardigan so you can seam the sides. So now it is time for us to do the ribbing. I'm gonna start by showing you how to open up and use the Ogo yarn in case you've never tried it before. And I'll also show you how to do single crochet through the back loop only, which is the technique we're gonna to use to make our ribbing. Now, if you already know how to do these things, then you can skip right ahead. However, I will walk you through these things first and then we'll get right into making our neckline and our bottom ribbing. So for the ribbing, you'll wanna make sure that you switch to your smaller hook size, the size seven hook. Now the Ogo yarn is quite easy. Simply take off the label, you'll split the yarn apart here where these two ends meet and cut the plastic there. And now your Ogo is ready to use. You can just pull one of the ends and the yarn will come right off tangle free. You could even split the yarn in the different colors if you wanted to. But for this pattern, we're gonna crochet right off the skein. To get started with our ribbing, go ahead and chain six. And once you have your six chains, we'll single crochet across this first row. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook to make a single crochet. When you get to the end of your row, chain one and turn your work. Now turn your work so it's facing you and you'll see these V's here. Normally, you would insert your hook under both loops, catching both V's on your hook. However, to single crochet through the back loop, we're gonna insert into the middle of the V, catching that back loop only. Yarn over, pull up your loop, and then yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook to complete your single crochet. Again, insert your hook into the middle of the V, catching only that back loop, yarn over, pull up that loop, and complete your single crochet. This is single crochet through the back loop, and you'll do it for every stitch on every row until you have reached your desired length. Now for the neckline and bottom ribbing, you're gonna to wanna to start with your neckline first and seam it on before you make your bottom ribbing and seam your bottom ribbing on. Now I don't give a specific length requirement. Um, that's because the seaming technique that you use may have altered the size of your cardigan a little bit. So simply use a tape measure or lay your neckline right up against your project and remove rows if you have too many or add more if you don't have enough and seam your neckline on. Once your neckline is complete, you can do the same for your bottom ribbing. Use a tape measure or just simply lay your ribbing right up against the bottom part of your cardigan. Make sure you leave your yarn attached in case you need to remove rows or add more to get the right length for your cardigan.
And once you have made your bottom ribbing, go ahead and seam it on using any seaming technique that you would like. You'll make the cuffs the same way that you made the neckline and bottom ribbing. I have some general and average wrist sizes here on the screen. I'm going to make mine five and a half for my eight year old. Your cuff is going to be significantly smaller in circumference compared to your sleeve. This is on purpose because we want to get that nice bubble sleeve look. So to seam your cuff to your sleeve, for every cuff stitch, Go through three to four sleeve stitches and this will allow your cuff to fit to your sleeve nicely. So now it's time for us to make the pockets. We're going to use the Suzette stitch pattern. I love this stitch pattern. I love how it looks right up against the half double crochet panels. I will show you how to do it. It's a very simple single crochet, double crochet, skip a stitch stitch pattern. But if you need more detailed instructions, I will put a link at the top of the screen. Let's get to it. For the pockets, we're going to switch back to our size H hook. So to make the Suzette stitch pattern, chain 16. And then starting in the second chain from the hook, you'll place one single crochet and one double crochet. Then you'll skip the next chain. You'll repeat this pattern down your chain row until you get to the last chain, where you'll place one single crochet. When you get to the end, you'll chain two and turn. Your chain two does not count as a stitch. Then you'll do exactly what you did on row one, placing one single crochet and one double crochet right there in that first stitch and then skipping the next stitch. You'll continue in that pattern until you get to the last stitch where you'll put one single crochet. You'll repeat row two until your pocket measures five inches. You'll make two pockets and then seam them on. You can use any seaming technique that you would like. Once you finish, weave in your ends and you are all done. And there it is, your very own Juju cardigan. I hope you love your project. Now here is that sneak peek that I promised at the beginning of this video. Again, 
Thanks so much for crocheting with me today. If you made the Juju Cardi, I would love to see it. Please tag me on Instagram, TikTok, wherever you can find me. Put it in the comment section of the blog post. I would love to see your version of it. And also leave a comment down below letting me know what else you would like to see. I have a lot of good things planned to come out on this channel very soon, but I would love to hear from you as well. Until next time, keep on making things for glory and for beauty.